Hey everybody, and welcome to day 11. I'm Kevin Wheel, I lead product at OpenAI, and I am definitely outclassed <laughs> by the two gentlemen on my right, who I'm told did not just get these uh, suits 48 hours ago on Amazon. Definitely, definitely own this already, 100%. <laughs> yeah. All right, so you might have noticed we've been putting a lot of effort into our desktop apps. Uh, so we, will, we launched our Mac desktop app about six months ago. We launched our Windows desktop app just a couple months ago. And as our models get increasingly powerful, ChatGPT will more and more become agentic. Uh, and that means we'll, we'll go beyond just questions and answers. ChatGPT will begin doing things for you. We're seeing that already uh, with products like Canvas, where uh, you're collaborating with ChatGPT to help improve the, your writing and your code, and that shift will continue. And we'll do ChatGPT will do more and more on your behalf. The desktop apps are a big part of that too, because being a desktop app, you can do so much more than you can just in a browser tab. That includes things like, with your permission, of course, being able to see what's on your screen and being able to automate a lot of the work that you're doing on your desktop. So we'll have a lot more to say on that as we go into 2025, but we've also got some exciting stuff that we're launching today. So let's dive in. All right. Hi, I'm John Nastos, and I work on the ChatGPT desktop team. My name is Justin Rushing, and I also work on the ChatGPT desktop team. Uh, we've got a lot to show you today, so I'm just going to go ahead and get started here. Um, so first things first, this right here is the fully native ChatGPT desktop app for Mac. Uh, it does all the things that you know, we've come to expect from our clients. Um, but what I really love about it is that being native, it's really lightweight. It doesn't use a lot of resources. It, uh, it lives in its own window. And um, it, I'm able to use it without having to context switch away from what I'm already doing. Right? So we've got this keyboard shortcut, option space, that makes it really fast to show and hide ChatGPT. So it's, it's always there when you need it. This button right here is our entry point for working with apps on your computer. And the way that I like to think about this feature is that we all copy and paste things into ChatGPT, right? All the time. All the time. All the time. Um, this feature makes that way smoother by when we are working with an app on your computer, we'll automatically pull that context in for you. So you just focus on asking your question, and we'll, we'll handle the rest. So you might notice that I've also got this warp uh, console window open as well. Uh, it's currently navigated to a repository that, that I'm getting up to speed on. Um, and it might seem kind of silly, but I want to figure out how many commits per day are happening in this repo. You know, we talk about velocity a lot mm -hmm. here, so I want to see that for myself. I have no idea how to do that, though. So I'm going to use ChatGPT. So when I click on this button, I'm going to see all of the apps that are currently running on my computer that ChatGPT can work with. Uh, important note, until you select one of these, we will never look at the contents of another app. So you are always fully in control over what you're sharing with ChatGPT. So to get started, I'm going to click on Warp. And at this time, huge shout out to the Warp team for all of their help in getting this going. Uh, when we first announced working with apps, we did not have support for Warp. And it was, I think, literally the first request <laughs> was adding support. Yeah. Um, so uh, huge shout out to the team. They worked really hard to help us uh, get it ready for today. So thank you. So I'm going to get started by saying, uh, write a command to get the number of commits per day over the past two months. And now, I don't need to tell ChatGPT that I use Git, because it can tell from Warp that I do. Um, and it's just going to give me the command that I need. So I'll push this button to copy and paste it into Warp. And I, I think this looks right. Yeah, it looks like the right information, but it's also kind of hard to tell what we're looking at, right? Yeah, I'm a, I'm a visual learner myself. So um, normally what I would do is I'd figure out how to get this into a spreadsheet, make a chart there, and then find that spreadsheet again in three years. But um, instead, I'm just, <laughs> going to, uh, I'm just going to ask for one. So make a bar graph with all of the results. Why not make it holiday themed? Great idea. And uh, awesome. So this is going to show off what I think is the coolest part about working with apps, which is that it works with all of the other features and all of the other models in ChatGPT. So in this case, uh, 4.0 decided to use advanced data analysis to crunch some numbers and give me back a bar graph. And what that means, if you really think about it, is that when we build features like advanced data analysis and bring them to ChatGPT, it's kind of like we're bringing them to every app that ChatGPT works with. Yeah. 
That's great. So while it thinks about this, um, do you want to talk a little bit about what the model is actually seeing? Is it just what we see on the screen, or is it something more? Great question. So an easy way to do this would be to just grab a screenshot and, and let Vision do the rest. Um, but we actually can reach into the application to grab off-screen content as well. And so uh, these results will contain everything here, not just what you see on screen. Yeah. Well, it's thinking hard about this. It might be the, the holiday-themed part. You I know. know. <laughs> oh, OK. That's perfect. perfect. All right. I mean, this is that looks pretty holiday themed to me. What do you think, John? Uh, it's holiday themed. I don't know if it's as holiday themed as we are in these suits, uh, but it's uh, not bad. Literally, <laughs> nothing is as holiday themed as you are. Yeah. <laughs> perfect. Perfect. But I'd say it's good enough. So I'm just going to download this, and now I can share it with a teammate. But with that, I'm going to hand it back to John to talk a bit more about programming. Great. So I think that the use case that Justin showed is really important and useful to be able to interact with a terminal. But I want to show what it's like to interact with code in an IDE. So I have Xcode open here, which is my IDE of choice. And it's running a sample app that is actually a little bit of a peek behind the scenes into how this Work With Apps feature works. The sample app uses the Mac OS accessibility APIs to look at Xcode and tell us some things about what's on the screen. So it's telling us that there is a text field with these dimensions. It tells us that it has 37 lines. And we can go down and check that. Looks right to 37 me. lines. Yep. And it shows us the content of the text field. And we actually use this to make the feature, right? That's yeah. right. Yeah, this is a useful sample <laughs> yeah. app for us, for sure. So this is nice, but it doesn't do any live updating. So mm. I'm going to use ChatGPT to help add that feature. I'm going to bring up the chat bar with a very similar shortcut to what Justin showed earlier, but with a slight change. I'm going to use Option Shift 1. And what that does is it brings up the chat bar with Xcode automatically paired to it, Xcode being the topmost app that is open that we support with this feature. It makes it super quick to start working with an app. Yeah, it's great. And you get this immediate feedback that it sees Xcode here. So these accessibility APIs are a little bit inscrutable. Mm -hmm. Definitely hard to remember how to use and pretty complicated, actually. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to use the model selector here. And I'm going to switch this to O1. O1 is one of our newer, newer models here at OpenAI. And it does a great job thinking about mm -hmm. these difficult coding problems. Um, and I should mention as well that uh, this feature is also available with O1 Pro if you really want to throw the deep end coding problems at Love it, right? Love model. Yeah. All right, so let's give it a prompt here. I'm going to say, add an observer. Uh, so if selection changes, load text areas is called. And we'll kick off this request to the model. So O1 is one of our chain of thought models. And you can see that it's thinking about this issue. It's going to tell us some of the steps that it goes through as it considers. And wow, that was a pretty fast response from it. <laughs> Didn't have to think too hard on that one, I guess. I guess not. <laughs> you got to give it a harder problem next time. <laughs> yeah, wow. All right, so it's generating some code. And you know, I have a fair amount of, uh, of trust in O1's code here. So as soon as it's finished generating, I'm just going to copy this into Xcode. And we're going to run it mm. and see what happens. I don't, I don't see anything that could go wrong with that. <laughs> no, demos. What could possibly go wrong. Yeah, live demos work 100% of the time. <laughs> it was one of the rules of the universe. All right, so I've copied that code and I'm pasting it directly into Xcode. I'm going to take a quick scroll through it to see if it's finding any issues. Right now, it's looking pretty promising. All right. So let's run this and see what happens. It, you know, it would be really cool if you didn't have to copy and paste that back into Xcode, though. That would be cool. And you know, people have been suggesting that. Should I build that? You should definitely build that. All right, PM approved. Great. All right. <laughs> so uh, let's. It's running again. Uh, let's take a look. If I select content, oh no, it didn't. It didn't, didn't work, work like we thought. Okay. Should we? Should we give it one more shot? Yeah. Why don't we? Why don't we ask? Yeah. yeah. All right. So I think I'm actually just going to go back to our previous state. Since I don't have a specific error here, uh, let's try to discard the changes. All right. Let's give it one more shot. Yeah, one more shot. Yeah. And while it's working, we can uh, talk about some more of the features here. OK, add an observer. So if selection changes, load text areas is called again. All right, 
Maybe it didn't think hard enough on that. Yeah, we'll, we'll try it again. <laughs> it got um, overconfident. <laughs> yeah. Well, it thinks about this. I should mention that I'm using Xcode. Uh, like I said, this is mm. my IDE of choice when working with Swift. Yeah. But we do support a whole bunch of other IDEs. Um, that means VS Code, uh, the JetBrains ecosystem, which includes Android Studio and PyCharm, RubyMine, things like that. Some really uh, standby Mac apps like TextMate and BB Edit. So we've got a, a whole lot of different support here. Yeah, I'm, I'm actually unreasonably excited for MATLAB support. I would have totally used that in college. <laughs> yeah, MATLAB is, is another exciting one. I think some students yeah. are really going to find that useful. OK, it's, uh, it is still generating some code. There it goes. It's done. Right. I'm going to use right. this copy button again. And again, with full trust that everything is going to work, <laughs> I'm going to paste it in. Now we know what could go wrong, though, right? Yeah, <laughs> sure. All right, so let's run this again and uh, see if we have slightly better luck. OK, it's running. Oh, hey, look at that. If I All select right. things, it changes. Wow, well, <laughs> right. it's, it's a holiday miracle. <laughs> you got the incantation to the demo gods right the yeah, second exactly. time. Glad, yeah, exactly. <laughs> awesome. So we've been talking a lot about coding today, right? Uh, but another thing that I love to use ChatGPT for is helping me with my writing. And I know I'm not alone here. Um, and so that's why today we're announcing support for three new applications, Apple Notes, Notion, and Quip. Uh, we think this is going to open up a brand new set of use cases for working with apps, and so we can't wait to see what you all do with it. Uh, with that, uh, John, Kevin, you already know this, but for the rest of you, uh, I give walking history tours in San Francisco outside of, outside of work. Um, big history buff. San Francisco's got a great story to tell, and I'm actually working on a brand new walking tour. And so why don't we try out this feature and help me out with that? Let's do it. Great. So here I have a Notion document open on my computer. I always write my tours in Notion. And this is actually a real walking tour that I'm working on. So uh, I, ho I hope you all find it interesting. Um, but I'm actually working on a new stop for my favorite character in San Francisco history, Emperor Norton. Mm -hmm. um, I know some high-level talking points. He was this self-proclaimed emperor of the United States and protector of Mexico, <laughs> uh, <laughs> who lived in San Francisco in the 1800s. And uh, he even made his own currency that was actually valid in the city for a oh, while. That's so, something you can just do? Yeah, apparently. Apparently okay. you can. And uh, I think right. it's going to make for a great tour stop. All right. uh, but I'm a little bit fuzzy on the details, and so I'm going to use ChatGPT to help me out. Uh, one option would be to copy and paste these bullets over. And I think chat would do a pretty good job at, at going with that. But it would be helpful if it had context of the entire document, right? And so instead, I'm going to have ChatGPT work directly with Notion. So I'm going to hit Option Space to bring up ChatGPT, have it work with Notion. And I'm actually going to go ahead and just um, highlight the stop here so that the model knows what to pay attention to. And so now we can see we're working with Notion in the walking tour document focused on selected lines. And I'm just going to go ahead and say, fill out these talking points. Right? Don't need to be any more specific than that. Um, but one thing that is really important is that this is a walking tour, right? This is a history tour. Things need to be factually correct. And so to help with that, I'm going to push this button to turn on search. And now, to answer my question, ChatGPT is going to search the web. And everything it tells me is going to be grounded in citations, right? And so anything I want to find out more about, I can go ahead and click the links. And you really start to see this awesome interaction loop pop up where ChatGPT is helping me with my research in the context of the document I'm writing. So awesome. Now, this looks like all of the stuff that I'm hoping to cover. And so it doesn't really sound like me, though. This sounds like you know, official results. And so I'm going to turn off search and just say, uh, make it match the style of the rest of the stops. Keep it short, two paragraphs. And now ChatGPT is going to go out and read the rest of my document, learn how, how I talk and how I've written the rest of these, and, and do its best to imitate that. And so awesome. This, this looks great. Let me introduce you to one of San Francisco's most beloved characters. <laughs> You'll have to come to the tour to find out the rest. Sounds like you. <laughs> so I'm just going to go ahead and highlight this to copy and paste it back into Notion. And of course, you know, I want to iterate from here. I'd want to refine this. Um, but that's just a quick example of using ChatGPT to work with Notion. That's awesome. I think that it's really compelling to work with your documents like this, um, not just code like I showed before, but your uh, written prose. 
Um, this is excellent, but it's just one way to work with the model, this sort of text in, text out method. And what I'd like to introduce today is support to use advanced voice mode with this feature. We're really excited about this. We think that this paradigm is a really interesting way to talk with ChatGPT and get insight into your documents or your code for that yeah. matter. All right, so we're going to show one of mine in a second here. Um, when I'm not at OpenAI, I spend a lot of time as a professional saxophone player. And I've got this holiday party set list mm. that I'd like some input on. I think ChatGPT would be great about this. But again, I'm, I want to use the voice to do this. Is this why your holiday parties are all so good, by the way? No, that's a different oh, thing. Okay, okay, yeah, okay. It. Is it the suits? <laughs> yeah, the suits help, for okay. sure, yeah. All right, so uh, yeah, I want someone special to yeah. really help out with this. Um, so let's bring up ChatGPT again with the shortcut that I mentioned earlier, which is Option Shift 1. Hmm. And that brings up our chat bar. It's automatically paired with notes. But this time, instead of typing to the model, I'm going to use this new advanced voice mode support. So I'll use this icon in the bottom right to bring in our special guest. Great. Hey, Santa, are you there? Oh, ho, 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 ho. Yes, I'm here. <laughs> How can I help you today? Santa, you get... it is so great to talk to you. Listen, I've got this holiday set list that I'm working on, and I've got a couple songs that I'm just not sure about. This one, I've got my love to keep me warm. I honestly don't really know that song very well. Can you recommend something else? Ho, ho! How about replacing I've got my love to keep me warm with Frosty the Snowman? Oh, that's, that's a good idea. Let's see. The Snowman. Did I get that right? Oh, 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 not quite. <laughs> oh, keep going. Sure thing. So is there anything else you'd like to know about your holiday set list? I, I think oh, oh, oh. Santa was bored with the copy editing, but we can move on. Uh, let's talk about the last song of the second set, Auld Lang Syne. I mean, that's a little bit dreary. I'm hoping for something more energetic to really get you and the elves dancing. What do you think? What should I replace it with? Ho oh, oh, ho! Deck the Halls would be a perfect replacement. It's jolly, festive, and sure to get everyone dancing. Ho oh, oh, ho oh. ho! Santa, I think that's a great idea. I think that song's really gonna slay. <laughs> <laughs> I think, you know, interacting with the, the voice model like this is such a great way to talk to your documents mm. and get live feedback on what you're doing. Totally. And, and, uh, Good news, uh, right before we stepped on this live stream, actually we pushed the button to ship all of the features we just showed off. So um, they should be available for you on your computer. Just make sure that you are updated to the latest ChatGPT app for Mac OS. Awesome. So that's day 11. It's uh, about using the desktop apps to see, understand, and automate the work that you're doing with ChatGPT. Uh, this is coming, this is available today as of, what, 20 minutes ago mm -hmm. on our Mac desktop apps, coming soon to Windows. I love the desktop apps. They're, they're in the background when you're doing work, and then it's a keyboard shortcut, and they're right there and able to help you do whatever you're working on. So that's day 11. We have one day left. We'll be coming to you tomorrow morning, day 12. We got something super exciting, so don't miss it. Yeah, we can't wait to get these features out to you. We're really excited. But in the meantime, I've got to start practicing this got stuff that, yeah, that Santa recommended. <laughs> All right, let's see. 